You know, it's the third time in the past three months I've made my way down to Cornwall. And is it any wonder when you see views like that one behind me? But it's not just the scenery here that's spectacular. Of course, the sea fishing is too. And that's the reason I'm here this weekend, to join a hundred other like-minded anglers who are taking part in the Cornish Lure Festival. So before the fishing gets underway, it's time for the event registration at a local tackle shop, a chance to meet up with some old friends and make a few new ones. For the past decade, anglers who love fishing with artificial lures have gathered on the Cornish coast to compete in this festival. Based at a tackle shop called The Art of Fishing, it's the brainchild of lure fishing pioneer Ben Field. There are three elements to the event. There's a bass and a wrasse fishing competition, where the biggest fish win. And at the other end of the scale, a chance for anglers who love fishing for the littlest of fish to compare their skills in a multi-species competition. It takes place over three days across the entire Cornish coastline. Sleep is optional, a dedication to your sport isn't. This is something a little bit different, with its roots in a saltwater lure fishing revolution that started back in the early 2000s. Um, Dan, you've been involved in this competition before. Tell us a little bit about it from a competitor's perspective. I think purely as a species hunt, having the whole free reign of Cornwall on our doorstep and the variety available, nothing comes close. It's, it's as close to an adventure as I, in my old age, would get now. <laughs> I tell you what, I've fished this competition probably seven, eight years in a row now. Um, I absolutely love it. And it's our only proper lure fest for, for Cornwall, so it's a big one. I think this is fantastic that often fishing is about catching the biggest thing you can catch. A lot of these are micro, mini species, aren't they? What, what is it about it that you, you enjoy so much? It's just the variety of fish for me, so it's finding what is out there and, yeah, the abundance of life. Um, a lot of, obviously, non-fishing people just assume there are just a handful of fish out there, when in reality, if you take a head torch down at night and get in the shallows and have a look, the amount of fish and the abundance of species is, uh, is amazing. So it's really cool to be able to target those tiny fish with tiny lures and get them out. Now then, Lee, judging by your hat, which has got a, a bass fin on the top, your bass angling this weekend, it's an interesting competition, this. It is, yeah. yeah it's, uh, a lot of people come from all over the country, so it's going to be interesting. The weather's looking good for it, so, yeah. What's the dream fish, Dan? For me, I've never caught a top knot, so Falmouth tomorrow is top knot central. Obscure little flatfish. Um, I, do, I like catching stuff down here that I don't catch at home. Uh, rock cooks and things like that, odd little rat species. I don't get those at home, so it's well worth a four hour drive to come down and see these colourful little fish. I'd like to get a red mullet, that's probably very high on the list. A hard one. Top knot as well. I had my first one here last year doing the uh, Lure Festival, so another one of them would be, uh, would be a cool one to tick off as well. What sort of size bass are we looking for, do we think? Oh, I want to hit 70 plus, really. I've had a few 60s this week, so uh, 60 pluses this week, so yeah. You might be the man to watch, Lee. Yeah, uh, you never know. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, go! Run, run, run! Well, speaking of old friends, Mr Field, it's a while since you and I were aligned together, isn't it? Really, really good to have you back in Cornwall. Now, speaking of Cornwall, Cornish Lure Festival is your baby. And what people may not know is that Ben was one of the very first pioneers of LRF fishing way back in about 2010, 2009. We have, I was doing a lot before that, but we opened the shop in 2010. So that's when we really started to obviously start to organise events and start trying to get more people doing it really quite proactively. So, uh, yeah, it went very well. And you started the Cornish Lure Festival a few years ago. It's the first time I've come down to, to join in with it. It looks great. What a brilliant concept. It's always been 
really good fun to be honest. I mean, the idea, I don't necessarily know why we did the first one. I think it was just a natural progression from having so many people in the shop, really being enthusiastic about lure fishing, wanting to be in Cornwall because we have such good fishing down here and such a, a, a vast variety of coastal areas to fish that uh, it just became something that we thought we would do. And it's obviously grown year on year. We've started from the very beginning with including these different categories of bass and, and the species hunt and things like that. Uh, one of the things I'm really interested in is this concept of the, the separate formats because we've got three kind of distinct areas really. Yes, we've got the bass fishing on fantastic storm beaches like this one. There are guys who are going to be fishing for wrasse and hopefully we get to see one of them. One of the things I'm also fascinated by is a group of grown men engaged in LRF fishing, for, so fishing for mini species, you know, with super high-tech gear. I mean, it's such the coolest way of fishing in the sea. It is. It's, it's one of those things where before you've done it, it's very easy to mock. But yeah. once you're actually involved, it, it, I've said it before, but it takes you back to just being a kid. And yeah. it's just a great laugh. It's also, I mean, the match angler in me, it, it's actually probably the most technical form of lure fishing that we probably do, in fairness. It, it, it gets to such a level where the rigs are so light, it's all about sink rates and line diameters and obviously hooks and different lures, the right ones in the right conditions, and it's such a minefield. <laughs> well, look, we've got some great stuff to come. Potential from one of the anglers earlier on said maybe 28 species could be caught. One of those species is bass. So Ben and I are going to go and have a little go and see if we can winkle one out of this lovely looking bay. So your sort of fishing career, you were a match angler. What was it that, can you remember, way back in the distant past, turned you around to, to the sort of the lure fishing world? I can, really well. It, it was probably, with regards to starting lure fishing, it was just time. I mean, it's, you know what it's like to be a match angler, you, you're, you're weeks on end. Like the whole, the whole week ahead of a match is, is revolving around setting yourself up for that one day at the weekend and I just didn't have the time to really do that so when you're fishing matches and you're constantly feeling frustrated that you're not really prepared it's not really a, a good frame of mind to be in and, and lure fishing partly because I live I lived right by the sea at the time um, you, I could have a, a rod set up by the door and just go whenever I wanted so bass fishing especially is, is probably even before the LRF it was the bass that I was I was doing a lot of. This is real adventure stuff I mean there are people here this weekend who would be fishing marks they've never seen before, as well as, all, of course, all the local guys who know some of this water like the back of their hands. It's a really interesting balance for a festival. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've always kind of, to be honest, the guys that I just love to have here are the ones that come from further afield because I like introducing the county to them. I like helping them to catch fish. You know, there are going to be people spending the whole weekend walking around fishing, not getting a wink of sleep, just obsessed. Some, some of them go mental. I mean, honestly, we'll hear stories on the Sunday probably of guys who are maybe only a three hour sleep all weekend. Um, and it's, it's uh, they go for it. I, I love it, I love it. I love that they get so into it. That this is, this is their one weekend of the year where they've got a free pass to just go fishing non-stop. And, and some of them genuinely do it, which is brilliant. Talking of fishing, let's do some more casting. Definitely. Well, that was a good fun little hour. I know we didn't catch anything, but um, good to catch up, good to fish with you again, and good to kind of have a little play with the concept of bass fishing in the Thornish Sea. There's an awful lot else going on there, isn't there? I can't wait. Uh, like I say, tomorrow, especially with the LRF side, the RAS side is a bit of an unknown, so we'll just see what happens for, on Sunday. There are people going to fish into darkness over this weekend. Um, there are people out on the rivers all over the place as well doing bits and pieces. So let's get out there and have a little look around and see what's going on. It's half past seven on the first day of the Lure Festival. You can see it's already getting dark. Um, one of the beauties of this event is that the anglers can fish for the entire 48 hours from 12 o'clock today. So some of the anglers will be fishing into darkness. In fact, as Ben hinted earlier on, a few of them might be fishing all the way through and have very little sleep. Now we've come to this piece of beach, which is actually not a million miles away from where we were fishing with Ben a little while ago, to meet up with Pete Williams, the man who won this competition last year who's found this little mark right out of the wind. I mean, it's just not a breath of wind here at all. It's amazing from where we were a few minutes ago. Um, and Pete's already in the water having a cast. So let's catch up with him and see what his plans are for tonight and uh, the rest of the festival. Now then, Pete, 
defending champion of the Lure Festival. Yes, indeed. What happened last year then? Well, signed on Friday afternoon, just after 12. Within three hours, I had a 71 centimetre bass on the bank, which is Fantastic. rather nice. Won me the competition. Do you know, fishing in the dark like this is so exciting. I mean, I always feel like you've got to speak in hushed tones because it's dark, don't yeah. you? It's weird. <laughs> but um, everything's intensified. I think, you know, you, you're concentrating so much on things you wouldn't normally concentrate on. I've done a bit of sea trout fishing in the dark, yep. and that's mad. Yep. This is the same, I reckon. It heightens your senses, doesn't yeah, it? it does. Yeah, because you, you know, the slightest thing and you're there, like, you know, because your concentration levels are really high. Yeah. You, you're looking at your surroundings, you're listening to the wildlife. We just heard yeah, oyster catcher. Oyster catcher, and there was a curlew there just now. So it's, you know, listen to what's going on. Yeah, yeah so fun. you're in tune with everything that's happening. exciting stuff this you know um, <laughs> and Pete is casting away down there in the dark and a couple of other anglers are on the beach as well which is uh, just goes to show the dedication these guys have got to their sport now uh, I'm going to save discretion being the better part of valor we're going to leave it for this evening disappear off and see what we can find in the morning and until then just hope one of these guys gets a bass or two in this incredible environment Morning all, it's the second day of the Cornish Lure Festival. Glorious morning, what a fantastic morning it is. We've already been out and about this morning, back down to see Pete Williams and his mate Andy Hadfield who are bass fishing again. Sadly, they didn't have a fish in the dark last night, uh, but they're gonna carry on trying and that's the kind of nature of the beast with this sort of thing. There's an awful lot of hunting around going on and people running around all over Cornwall. And today, we're gonna go and see something very different indeed. Um, we're heading to Falmouth for the second part of the competition, which is the multi-species element. So, we're in Falmouth, and behind me, this group of very cool looking dudes are about to embark on the multi-species part of the competition of the Cornish Lure Festival. You know, it's all very social. We're in a pub garden, it's very pleasant, but do not be fooled because these guys are absolutely driven to catch multiple species. Lots of weird things with mysterious names like Top Knot and Scad, the likes of things you have never seen. And today, we're about to see these guys go into action. This is gonna be brilliant. So among the bustle of Falmouth on a busy Saturday morning with shoppers walking back and forth, behind me the anglers taking part in the multi-species competition here at the Lure Festival. We spoke yesterday about your sort of love of this type of stuff. How, mm. How's your weekend going so far? What sort of, what's the species count? At the moment I'm on 11, Ooh. so I'm not, yeah, but we're not threatening any of the, um, any of the big players here today. What is it about this that kind of floats your boat because you've caught some very big fish over the years I know um, and the fish we're fishing for today are very little a lot of them so I mean, just show the camera your bait in other terms you might call that a caro rig but we've got a sliding weight I'll just use float stops on there so I can adjust the length of that and we've got a 16 size 16 long shank with a tiny little piece of flavored worm on there and it's that will knock out a majority of what we need to get because obviously a lot of the particularly when you're species hunting a lot of the species only grow so big and even the species that get bigger we only need to get the small one we don't need to get the bigger fish i mean on this competition today obviously a length would be useful so if we had some bigger bad and rest maybe you know it a lot of it's going to be who's brave enough at any point to fish big oh who's going to go would well, you know what a lot of the small stuff is is used up now i'm going to fire out a big bait and then see if you can drag, you know, because obviously one decent ballon at 35 centimetres is as good as three, maybe four little gobies or little cork and rats. So in the water, don't, don't just do too much talking. I'm watching I know those I'm, standards. I know, I know. 
the, the thing that I find amazing about this, I mean, you guys have got a whole day doing this. There's about 30 odd of you walking mm. around. Um, we're going to be fishing into darkness as well, which is quite exciting, yeah. especially around a harbour like this, you know, around the harbour wall and stuff, all the way down through this fantastic... Oh, it's lovely Falmouth, isn't it? Great place. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's lovely. I'd, in built-up areas like this in cities, of course, this is LRF, or even in the wider term, street fishing, really, heaven. Because it's easy, easy underfoot, you've got railings, you've got steps, you've mm. got everything you need. So for particularly newcomers into fishing in general i know today it might not seem like it we've got several rods and all different things but you can have one rod one little bag over your shoulder mm. and you can walk about and you can go and catch some fish so it's a great way of if you're hardcore species hunting or if you want to i'll take the kids out and we do it yeah um and stuff like that and it's easy you can just do a quick hour couple of fish everyone's happy and away you go i think what's fascinated me about it over the years particularly is that it's a very because it's very finesse Obviously, it's a nice gateway into the wider law fishing aspect. Yes. So, um, it, this is completely transferable over to perch fishing on a canal, and then you know, even on the bigger reservoirs and things like that, or out in the boat sea fishing. If you can master finesse fishing, the rest of it will just fall into place. I could spend days and days doing this. Just love it. <laughs> Look, I'll let you carry on for a second, and we'll hopefully, you get your holy grail of a species which i understand is the top knot yeah after dark after dark oh. you'll get the you'll get the phone call andy if we get a top knot i love I it i promise you thank you mate now to the uninitiated seeing a group of grown men with hundreds possibly thousands of pounds worth of fantastic fishing equipment standing on a little pier catching fish like that might appear to be a little bit silly and the reason it seems a little bit silly is because of course it is but that doesn't mean it's not great fun. And one of the things I love about this is the community that this, this is building. There are groups of these guys on various different piers up and down Falmouth Harbour. This becomes a real lifestyle thing. Of course, it's not just about catching the fish, although there is that kind of honour code of who's caught the most species. But it's about being together and competing and seeing who can do the best on the day. And that just makes this into, just like any other fishing competition anywhere in the world. What we've got there, Lucas? Yeah. Shanny here. A shanny? Yeah, a little common blenny. A common it, blenny. Is that otherwise known? Very squirmy, very different kind of look. How many species have you had so far, Louis? So far in this weekend, I've had 12 species so far. I think the winner's on, the winner's on 20 something. Who's that? I don't, I don't know. I think Will's go. I think Will's quite high up in the in yeah, the range. He usually is, isn't he? We'll speak yeah. to Will in a minute. But let's get your blenny measured. Yeah, Banned on nine out of ten tournaments. <laughs> So little Blenny, this is the world you see, this is this multi-species kind of world that these guys are in. Little tiny Blenny like that, 129 millimetres and let me tell you, every millimetre counts. Now then, on the end of the pier here in section B, on the left hand side is Will Pender, on the right Andy Mitten. That's like the Premier League of multi-species anglers. And they've had, between them, Will is on 12 species from this mark and Andy's on 11, side by side. It's extraordinary stuff, isn't it? Now, the friendly kind of nature of this type of thing means that they're actually swapping positions occasionally to give each other a go on the mark. And having fished with Andy a little bit, I know how competitive he is, and Will is just an absolute machine at this sort of fishing. Uh, he's got the reputation of being possibly one of the best around. So um, let's tap into what they're doing and see what's going on, shall we? Ooh, Mitten's in. See that bass? Chase it up. Oh. There's a bass underneath that's just chased it up. Oh. Well, so that was a cork wing. I've had a bit of a dry spell, but that's fish number 12. And after about 15 minutes of not catching one, I'm really happy with that. I'll best let you get and measure that, Mr. Mitten. Well done. Yeah. Measure that. Get it back. But there was a bass that probably wasn't oh, Excitement level's just raised here. What is it about this that you love, Will? Uh, just the diversity and the socialising, you know, meeting guys. I I bait fished in comps for years. It's the and it just gets predictable. So the challenge, the challenge of this, um, yeah, playing the variables, the weather, the tide. You just got to work with what's there, and yeah, it's uh, something I've just done and do and enjoy doing. So you do have a reputation of kind of being one of the. The top names in the multi-species world. I mean, that, that's a 
fair privilege. Yeah, uh, it's been hard work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, not sleeping. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's good. And I love sharing what I've learned over the years with people. You're in the right part of the world for this as well. I mean, Cornwall is heaven for this sort of fishing, Definitely. isn't it? Literally, location is my, my blessing. I think Mr Mitten's just overtaking you, by the way, because he nearly hit me in the head with the cork wing a couple that's, of seconds that's ago. That's absolutely fine. I've, I've got the, uh, the points of vantage for the species over the weekend, I think, at the minute. So, so how many species are you on so far? I managed 20 prior to, this, uh, to the Falmouth leg. There's 30, 35 viable species this time of year. Really? So it's, it's just a case of going where the fish are and just ticking them off, working through the basics, really. Um, yeah. Incredible. Well, look, I'll let you carry on concentrating because you. you've got to overtake Mitten. Now then, mate. Afternoon, sir. You nearly hit me in the head with the cork green rattle. I do apologise. It's the heat, it's the excitement. Oh, 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 hello, oh. hello, what have we got here? I need a net, I need a net. I've uh, just hooked a bass. Wow. Is that you asking me to go and get you a net? Uh, it might be a big ballon ras, actually. Isn't should... it amazing? Oh, it's stunning. Like, you just never, with LRF, you never know what's going to come up. So we've fished this spot now for about an hour. I've had... 13 fish out of there. This is my 14th fish from this spot, and it's the biggest one of them all. Well, do you know, I love the fact that Will's just rushed off and got you the net and landed it for you, and that's what this is all the about. The social isn't it? element of this style of fishing is unlike any other competition fishing in the UK, well, worldwide that I've been involved with. It is unique, truly unique. Rats are just different gravy. They are amazing fish. And actually, enormous. I mean, you probably saw the bend in Andy's rod. They are flipping angry. That's a ballon wrasse. There are several species of wrasse in the UK. I think they all count as one this weekend. That might be the biggest one we see. You never know what's going to turn up. It could be a five pound bass, it could be a five pound wrasse, and you, you want to make sure you're landing those fish, especially in a competition. So The other thing I like, and actually I fished with him a few years ago, and I ended up buying a landing net like that after watching you using it. So These are vital, you know, we are using light rods and it's really difficult to lift the fish up out of the water without these nets so when the big one comes along you're always thankful for this. What I loved about that ras just a few moments ago was the fact that Will, who's kind of, you know, you and he are daggers drawn in this competition aren't you, but you're not really. No, not really. Um, and he rushed off, grabbed the net and landed it for you, that's awesome. Yeah, the whole feel of this event is unlike any other um, I've ever experienced in competition fishing, both UK and internationally. Um, give you an example last night we were fishing six of us shoulder to shoulder asking each other what each other needed for their species tally then actively seeking them out pointing them out showing them where the fish were and helping them to catch them not physically fishing for them but you know you need a Tom Pop Lenny there's Tom Pop Lenny they then go and catch it <laughs> or then giving them words of encouragement why don't you try this and then something good comes along and everyone's sort of really happy for the other angler yeah. it's very much unlike any well yeah it's unique that in competition fishing So tranquility is returned to Fish Strand Quay as the section disappears off elsewhere in Falmouth to see what else they can catch. And that's the way this is going to work for the rest of the day. They've got 90 minutes in each location to catch as many different species and as many different fish as they possibly can. This is chaotic stuff. There's an awful lot going on. Isn't it just brilliant? There's a competition with a load of guys fishing for little stuff. Love it. But as Andy Mitten proved, it's not just about the little stuff. Here's Steve Dennis, who managed to attach himself to a rather large Falmouth mullet, which was safely landed after an epic fight on lightweight LRF equipment. Rather incredibly, a few minutes later, he managed to land another one just like it. I have to say, I wasn't targeting them. <laughs> if I'm completely honest, I was just down the side like everyone else. I'd seen them swim through, thought they'd gone. Next thing I know, little tap tap, gentlest of bites, rod arched over, clutch started slipping. Yeah, it's good fun. Scorpion fish. Scorpion fish. 
Oh, yes, that's the oh, coolest nice thing in the world. Look at that. The colloquial rockfish. Coolest fish in the sea. Yeah. Look at that. So coolest this is fish. why you come to do this sort of thing. I mean, you know, I know I'm joking a little yeah. bit when I say this is, is silly, but when you see something like that. Look at that. Brilliant. Look at the environment. Look. He's got the spikes to stop the cormorants getting him. There's so many rods behind and he's And a lot of people think they're poisoned, but they're not. Look at that. It's all about built for your environment. They do get bigger than that, by the way, but that's... Uh, yeah, handsome little fish. Do you know, I'm so pleased we've seen a scorpion fish. It's one of the species I wanted to oh, see. Oh, good, good. Oh, well, I'm pleased, you're pleased. <laughs> Back he goes. But what have the other species landed in this most unique of competitions? Here's a little selection of what you might be able to find next to the sea wall at a place like Falmouth. deep into the afternoon session in the multi-species competition here in Falmouth and things have slowed down a wee bit. I think it's partly due to the tide but one of the things I've absolutely loved about this sort of subsection of the Lure Festival is the geekiness of it. It's absolutely fantastic. There are people very excited about species and subspecies and sub-subspecies of blennies and gobies and all sorts. Now, one of the things that's upsetting the anglers this afternoon is the fact that all gobies just count as gobies unless they're a certain type of goby. And all blennies count as blennies unless they're a leopard blenny. Or is it a leopard goby? I can't remember. You know, there are so many different things here. It's a little bit difficult to keep up, but it's fantastic fun watching these guys competing against each other. We're going to go deep into the evening. There's another afternoon session to come and then the last one, which will be fished in the dark. And I can't wait to see what happens with that one. That's going to be fantastic. We're into the evening session now, it's just gone six o'clock, the tide has changed round so it's now starting to ebb away and this competition's entering a really, really interesting stage. Even though it's a small fish competition, the level of intensity and the amount these guys are trying hasn't altered from the sort of thing you'd have if you were fishing for, I don't know, 20 pound carp and huge sea fish. So what's happening? is the Andy Mitten over my right shoulder, the guy we saw catch that wrasse earlier on, an England international lure angler, is winning the competition. However, Will Pender, the man who was standing next to him and landed that lovely wrasse for him earlier, is really on the charge. Will Pender is catching poor cod, which are tiny little species, a little goldy coloured fish that is a member of the cod family. He's also had a really nice sized cork wing wrasse. Now where we are at the moment in the competition, as these light levels start to drop, it's actually starting to get quite cold here in Falmouth. The whole thing could change completely because the pelagic species, things like wrasse and garfish and scad, will start to come on the feed. Well, we're in the final stage of the multi-species competition here in Falmouth. As you can see, darkness has fallen and this is when things start to get really, really interesting. We're on the pier, the big one, um, in the kind of top end of the town centre. It's nicely lit, but the guys are casting into darkness, which is really quite exciting. And when you're fishing in darkness like this, the senses are kind of working in overload, just trying to figure out what's going on. We've already seen a couple of quite interesting things. Um, the first of which was a scad, which is a kind of pelagic species. So a species that sits up in the water rather than crawling along the bottom. I'm just waiting to see for the next hour and a half or so if some of those slightly more unusual species, and we've seen one or two unusual ones already today, haven't we, um, start to come out to play. Every member of the, the three different teams that have been walking around Falmouth all day, they're all on the pier for this final section. And just to make things slightly more interesting for everybody, 
this is the only bit of water that hasn't been fished by the Lure Festival anglers all day. So it's as if the day workers have gone home and the night workers have come out. So these predators move in at night and they like to come into areas where there's ambient lighting, so where there's street lighting. The bait fish tend to get attracted to the street light and then the predators aren't too far away. But they use the shadows then to ambush them as the prey goes. It's a scary story you're telling here in the darkness on the end of the pit. It is. Um, you wouldn't want to be a small fish down there. It's right, I mean, you know, much just showing the, the eye and the great big mouth on that. It's a small predator, but it's definitely a predator, isn't it? Yeah. And again, the, sort of the approach for fishing for these sort of fish, you're changing your, taking off those little tiny worm imitations and fishing with little small metals and, and yeah. small lures. Yeah, small jig heads. Um, you want to imitate a small bait fish, the prey that they're feeding on now. It's quite important to get the full speed right. As you've seen, those fish aren't swimming. They're, a lot of them are sat uh, suspended. And trying to mimic that is key with a the scad. They're, they're not easily tripped up, so. I have to ask you something. Yeah. Coming into this session, it would appear you're leading. Hmm. How is that? It's fine. Exciting? It's exciting. I wish the fish were biting a bit more, though. Yeah, I've noticed you've not had much action. No, it seems to be slow, but if it's slow for me, it seems to be slow for everybody else, so. I've got a couple of tricks that I'm hoping to try and pull. Whoa. Hard to keep but, secrets, though, when you've got kind of, you know, 25, 30 other people standing around you watching everything you do. Yeah, it is. It's much like being on the lake, so you, you find a way. So we're into the last hour, Mr Field, of our lure fest today here in Falmouth. How do you think it's gone? I think it's been brilliant, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's fished. We weren't sure what to expect. In a way, we didn't want it to be too good because the stewards that are helping us out would have been totally off their feet. But the guys are caught. It's been pretty consistent and fair, I think. Um, and now we're onto the sort of the last zone of the day where it's all fishing a bit different. So it's tough, but there's a bit of variety coming out now, so it's quite interesting. It just opens up a whole new world to these anglers, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, this, like I say, the point of this type of fishing is you never know what to expect, really. So this, this, the whole day for me has been a bit of an unknown, really. So uh, the fact that it's now kind of coming to, refru coming to fruition, um, we've had a great day, the weather's been amazing, and it's just all worked out kind of exactly as we'd hoped, really. So it's been lovely. I think the other thing I like about this is when we sort of started things off yesterday, everybody was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. They've been <laughs> slogging it, haven't they, for, for a few hours. This really is a bit of a marathon. 48 hours is a long time to be out. Yeah, I mean, some of the guys, I know I, I know a little bit of information sort of behind the scenes about how many species some of these guys have actually already caught. So it's all going to kind of come out, obviously, at the end, but it's going to be great to see the end results. Fantastic, sir. Look at that. Do you know, it takes a good angler to catch a fish like that. Do you know what? I agree, Andy. It does take a very good angler to catch one of those. And it wasn't by accident. <laughs> well, that's even better, well done. <laughs> We're 15 minutes from the end of the competition today, and if you doubted that this was really high-level, high-pressure stuff, just look at Andy Mitten, who was leading coming into this event. He's really struggled, you know, the last half hour or so, but he's such a competitor. And look at this fish. This is another scad, the first one that Andy's had, and that really could make a huge difference in the overall end result of this competition. So here's the crew that have been thrashing around Falmouth all day from daylight into darkness. I dread to think how many species have been caught by this lovely lot of anglers. It's been a brilliant day and we'll have to wait until tomorrow to find out which of this lot have won the competition. Thanks fellas, well fished all of you. Sleep well, I think you've earned it. <laughs> yeah, most of them are not going to sleep, that's the scary thing. They're gonna go off fishing somewhere else now. See you tomorrow at the showground. As the final day dawned, that most elusive of species, the bass, were back on the agenda. Some good fish had been caught on both the north and south Cornish coastline. Mostly, it seems the fish were in the surf enjoying the turmoil of the breakers confusing their prey. The biggest fish caught so far was landed and filmed by Johnny Jones. It may have been covered in sand before it was safely released back into the sea, but this magnificent fish was 73 centimetres long and weighed between 8 and 9 pounds. The third category in the festival was to catch wrasse, 
and this stunning looking fish landed by Charlie Pearson was among the biggest caught. Now of course last night we left the multi-species crew disappearing out into Falmouth and I have to say after nine hours of fishing lots of them just went on and carried fishing through the night. These are truly crazy crazy people but you can't help but admire their incredible dedication. Now we're talking of species, the one species we haven't seen this entire weekend so far is a bass. So we've come here to this fantastic looking beach and who better to give us half a chance of seeing one than the defending champion himself, Pete Williams. Well, good morning, Pete. Good morning, Andy. Um, you've brought us to a fairly nice location this morning. I, I'm, I've got no words, it's glorious. <laughs> this is the mouth of the estuary, mate. Um, obviously, I mean, I, I've never seen, I've got to say, anywhere look more fishy than this. We're, the tide's dropping away, isn't it? Yep, yep. Uh, the Ron. water clarity's insane. It's just the most gorgeous place to fish. It, conditions are perfect and it looks, looks good. So we're running out of excuses then. Yep, we are. It's, all we need, all we need now, is the fish to turn up. Yeah, but one, that can happen at any time. One thing I'm, I, I just tap into your local expertise here, because clearly, it's been quite hard to find the bass this weekend. And I mean, not often is. You know, when they're there, they're there. But when they're not, they can be quite frustrating. Right. What, what do you think's the reason behind it being a bit of a struggle this this last couple of days? I don't know because the wind, the wind is been all over the place you know we started off with southwesterlies and it's now gone round this is a bit of east in it I think yeah there is it's a bit of a chill yeah, in the area like isn't south east so you know it's like wind in the east fish bite the least and all that Indeed. but now we say that but Andy your mate up there has actually had he we reckon he's had a hit and you've had a follow this morning yep yep so there's potential there's certainly some fish in this cut I mean why wouldn't there be look at it this is what I like to call the nervous water, you know, with all the rips and that. Cause, yeah. And that stirs up the bait fish. They get a bit confused, you know, and uh, the bass take advantage of it. So. so today's routine, we've got until lunchtime basically to fish. So it's just gone nine o'clock in the morning now. Yeah, so we've got two and, and a half, half hours. Yeah, two, two and a half, half three hours. hours. Okay. Well, look, I shall let you concentrate. I can see you're fishing your favorite gravity stick oh, yes. again. <laughs> um, I'm going to actually have a little bit of a fish. I'm going to drop down below you if that's all right. Yep, nice one. Um, I'm actually going to fish a top water, so something that goes across the surface. Works here as well. Yeah, we'll see what happens. It's quite shallow, isn't it? Yep, yeah. Oh, we're in, you know, six foot of water, roughly. So, uh, yeah, you'll pull them up with that. No well, problem. let's hope so. So, well, Pete's fishing his gravity stick, which sinks quite quickly through the water column and searches the layers. I just fancy my chances of trying to pull something off the top here. And this is what I'm going to be using. This is basically a little mullet pattern. And it's designed to float on the surface and you kind of use aggressive movements with the rod tip to make it make little splashes. Now I've just had a little prospect, one cast before we started doing some filming and three attacks on this lure in the space of about five seconds. So I'm now starting to get ridiculously excited and I need to have another cast. So the routine with this is really quite simple. Although you are quite busy, chuck it account, uh, across the channel, tighten up, and as soon as you're in touch with the lure, start pulling it back and it makes little splashes, like a distressed bait fish. And of course what we're fishing here is the apex predator in this bay, which is the bass and they love surface activity. Imagine that's a little distressed fish trying to escape across the surface and the bass will chase them in and smash them to pieces. It is the most exciting way of fishing. It's phenomenally exciting. Real adrenaline stuff. I've got barbless single hooks on my lure because we're fishing catch and release. So I've swapped those over from the trebles that it comes with for barbless hooks just to make it easier to deal with the fish when we catch one, if we catch one. I said when then, I didn't mean to. I don't want to be too optimistic, but I am excited. I think Pete might have just switched over to a top water. Yes, he has. Good Lord.
This is quite exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's like dry fly fishing, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose it is really. Visual. I've had, I think, two or three bits of interest and one little swirl at the lure that was almost under the rod tip, which was just heart stopping. Yeah. I've felt one. I've had one. Oh, really? That, yeah, tightened up and come off again. Wow. I'm thinking about dropping down the size, actually. Yeah, I think my, my top water's a bit smaller than yours. You're, yeah. you're on a 140, aren't you? Yeah, I'm on the biggest one. I'm on the one. 110. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're probably better off with a 110. It's just, the thing is with stuff like this, I think two things. One, it's a busy method, so it's quite exciting and you feel like you're doing something, don't you? That's right. All the time. But the other thing is, I think the fish, they can't ignore it. You know, because they're such curious predators, they've got to come and have a look, haven't they? Yep, they certainly have, yeah. And then that gives you a little bit of hope. And I think after the weekend we've had, chasing after these bass, specifically you guys, you've been at it all since Friday, you know, you just need a bit of hope. <laughs> a little bit of sleep in between, but not a lot. A little bit of sleep, yeah. <laughs> I don't think sleep's been, um, you know, a paramount um, priority no, for most no. of the people it's taking not as all. It's not all it's cracked up to be, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, Pete, we've had a brilliant morning in terms of fishing, but those fish didn't want to play ball, did they? That was uh, frustrating. As soon as that wind picked up, fish went off didn't it it's really interesting you know because when we put those top waters waters on right back at the start yeah. i thought we had a chance and there were certain you had a couple of follows yeah a couple of good hits i think i had one at least one sort of really proper yeah and then that that wind kicked up which is as we said earlier i got a bit of east in it and they just disappeared and even there was no mullet moving either was there no. so it just shows what the wind does you know it's i had i had one good solid that stopped me and another one that was on and off, and several offers. You know, as soon as you had the offer on the fl on the on the uh, on surface the lure, I swapped straight over to the big patch, and we were getting hits. Yeah. But so, what that all means is, unfortunately, the time has beaten us. It's now ten to twelve. Yep. Yeah. Um, you've got to get back to headquarters and get your fish um, uploaded to the system by one o'clock. Unfortunately, <laughs> nothing to upload. Defending <laughs> champ has nothing to upload. So um, the title is gone, Pete. I'm yeah, sorry to say. that's it. End yeah. of. <laughs> <laughs> Never but mind. In all honesty, thank you so much for putting up with us following you around this weekend. And today's been an absolute pleasure. I've really enjoyed it. I wish we'd seen a couple of bass, but it's enough to make me want to come back. Well, it's been a pleasure fishing with you Andy you, so, uh, and you're welcome anytime that's an offer I'm going to take up anyway let's get back to headquarters because an awful lot's going to happen from now we've got to find out who has won the overall competition for the biggest bass but also we'll discover who won that incredible multi-species yesterday there were three titles to win First, the RAS prize went to Tommy Bryce, well with three fish for 135 centimetres. Then, the epic multi-species, which was fought out between Andy Mitten and defending champion Will Pender. So, overall champion with 11,128 points is Will Pender. Well done, well done. And what does it mean to you to win the festival? Because I know, you, you know you've done it before, it's a great achievement, but what does it mean? Uh, it's just it's great. It's just great retaining the title. Knows that I'm, you know, I'm still up there. I'm, yeah, I, it's, it's that justification that I mentioned earlier. It's, it's the work put into it over the years and putting it all into place. I love the stress. I love the stress and the pressure and the mind games of the species hunt. It's, that's what I live for, you know, it's, it's a real passion. Not even the fish, but just knowing the tides, the time, the pressure, seeing what other people are catching. Yeah, scratching your head, knowing where to go. It's, it's interesting. Love it. Well done, mate. Thank you. Finally, the biggest bass and the biggest trophy of all. It went to Johnny Jones for his 73 centimetre fish.
So an event that started on Friday lunchtime has gone all the way through to Sunday. 48 hours of solid fishing, hundreds of miles traveled by loads of anglers committed to lure fishing in Cornwall. It's been the most brilliant event and to hear the passion in the voices of those guys who've caught all of those fish and spent all of those sleepless hours um, trying to find them, it's just been brilliant. My first ever experience of the Cornish Lure Festival and I sincerely hope it won't be my last.